I'm going to touch on what we're going to try and cover a tiny bit about the industry. I'm David Stevens. I'm CEO of the textile services industry. I do have a lot of experience in laundry. We ran a laundry company for 40 years, so I know a fair bit about laundry. And Emma, my colleague, is at the front. And she really, A, she makes sure I'm on time and all those sort of things, but also does all the lobbying and the sort of the legislative side of what we're trying to present around sustainability and sort of lobbying with the government and things. So there will be little messages Emma will try and take away from today. You've got to sit near the front. We haven't got to. You're not going to either. Okay. <laughs> so, no more place. So if we just look a tiny bit about commercial laundry, we don't represent in-house. We do represent NHS Scotland. They are members of the association. Um, so most of what I'm going to talk about is NHS England, because NHS England outsource most of their laundry, which I'll touch on. We're just saying, if you take laundry away, and I'm actually really pleased that some of you have had a conversation about laundry. Normally, people don't even know what laundry is, and they're unaware of our industry. So we do, you know, if you removed laundry, and we were tempted to do it once or twice, we would get noticed. But until we remove it, it's just an invisible service. And if you work in the laundry, you'll definitely feel invisible. No question on that. Um, but if you just look at some of the numbers, hotels would close within one day, the NHS would probably close on the same day, and you wouldn't have any vaccine. We wouldn't have been able to deliver the vaccine or food for the hospitals because they wouldn't have any white coats, and the pharmaceutical industry wouldn't have anything to wear. So it's a big part. No operations would happen, but you only know about that when it disappears. We employ relatively small numbers compared to, say, the NHS, 24,000 people, um, but we support 5 million jobs. So we're a massive support sector to the UK PLC, including the NHS. Only a third of people actually work in the laundry. Somebody said, how many people work in the industry? About half. Um, yeah, not that funny. Um, but a third of the people actually work on the factory floor. So we have a lot, you know, drivers, account managers. Um, a big part of laundry is actually the lo logistics of managing the laundry, not actually the washing. Um, we run other friendship schemes, but I'll keep moving. We process 53 million pieces of laundry a week. And I got phone during COVID, and it was all about can we wash reusable gowns for during the pandemic. They said, would our industry have capacity to wash 400,000 gowns a day? That was that peak demand. And I said, well, we, we were washing 53 million pieces a week, so yeah, we've got enough capacity. And that was the NHS phoning us as a trade association. So, so, yes, we have lots and lots of capacity, and we'll talk about single-use versus multi-use a little bit later on. So we think we're really well positioned. On sustainability, um, we're part of the solution, and that's what we're going to touch on it today and sort of open it up a little bit. But the, we have one big, big issue on the sustainability journey, and we'll talk about that in a moment. But we think laundry is part of the solution, not part of the problem, and we'll touch on that. But does anybody run a NHS in-house laundry? Does anybody else in-house, commercially? Which laundry is that? Sheffield. Right, okay, so that's a proper laundry, actually, isn't it? It's a commercial laundry run on scale. If we take the care home sector, 99% of care homes will have what we call on-premise laundries. So an on-premise laundry will use about 30 litres of water per kilo. We use three. Um, and about what, three kilowatt of energy per kilo process, and we use about 0.8. So we're already well into that sustainability journey. Just getting rid of single-use plastic, just on the hotel side, we use 100 tonnes of single-use plastic a week. We're trying to get rid of that within the next 12 months. Actually, this morning, we are in a hospitality roundtable meeting, and we'll, we'll talk about that a little bit later on. So there's lots of things where we can contribute to your journey on sustainability. I won't worry about the revenue side. We're all over the country. I mean, there used to be 400 members of our association. We now have um, 87, he says, looking at Emma. Um, but there will be a laundry near you. There's about 200 sites, laundry processing sites in the UK. There used to be 1,000. So, but laundries have got much bigger, much, much bigger. Um, and to build a laundry is probably a 10 million pound investment. So they're, they're big companies, they're big investments. Um, and they've consolidated, massive consolidation. The NHS is pretty much serviced by two outsourcing members, at least in Synergy. And then there'll be some other members, some in-house. Um, but most of the NHS is serviced 
by outsourcing NHS England. Scotland and Wales still have in-house laundries, but 90% of NHS work in the UK is processed by commercial laundries. Um, I'm just showing you a few slides from a laundry tender done by NHS North of England, and it just talked about sustainability. And this is, if you want to be part of the NHS supply chain, these are the things you've got to do. And this was aimed at, at laundries, and we agree with all of it. You've got to be all those tick boxes. I'm going to go quite quick on this. Net zero ambition, you've got to have a supplies roadmap. Um, and the NHS has quite a good roadmap to sustainability. If I said how are you going to get there, I think there are more challenges around your roadmap. What are you actually physically doing to achieve net zero? Um, the social bit we love, and we will show you our roadmap in a minute. If we look at your, and this will be, I don't know if you sat in on the sustainability bits earlier on, but you end up with a scope one, scope two, and scope three. Scope one is really what you do within the hospital. So it's the energy you use to provide the service you do within that facility. Scope two is just the electricity you use to provide that facility, but scope three is everything else. So within the NHS, you're saying your scope three is, is all this. But laundry and textiles isn't showing on it, whereas we, as laundries, are on your scope three. We're part of your scope three. So if laundries can work with you to reduce our sustainability footprint, that improves the NHS scope three footprint as well. So everything a laundry does is part of your scope three. So we think, yeah, we want to work with you and engage with you. And it is quite hard engaging with the NHS. As a trade association, it, I'm being polite, sort of, but it is quite a frustrating journey for us. And we're going to talk about that and how we, you know, we think it could be better. Here's our sustainability report, um, and it will have all the imagery you've got because we're all sort of working on the same consultancy sort of platforms, the same drawings, as looks a bit like yours. We did survey the NHS and laundries, so members is actually, well, it says laundries, we changed it, well done. Nobody argues sustainability. If you talk to your teams, and actually the younger you are, the more likely you are to support the sustainability journey. Um, but um, yeah, we've not surveyed anybody said we shouldn't do it, you know, forget it, we don't believe in climate change, except we presented this a bit similar to this in America, and genuinely some of the questions were, but climate change isn't real. But if we assume that that's America, in the UK we've not had that as a sort of genuine concern. So we're all on the same page, you've got your own emission graphs, we've got ours. Our scope three is slightly different to your scope three, so our scope three would be buying textiles, it would be buying the detergents, buying the products we use to wash. Our scope one is the water we use, the energy we use to dry and wash the product. And then scope three at the other end, so downstream, is what we do with end-of-life textiles. So how do we dispose of water? So what do the sewage people use? But also what do we do with end-of-life textiles? So within the NHS, what do you do with your gowns, your garments, your sheets, your bed linen, your blankets? So that would be part of your scope three, but if it's a laundry, it's part of our scope three. So sort of, we're all on the same page, but all sustainability journeys are pretty similar. So three perceptions around laundry. So who owns most of the NHS linen? What's more sustainable? And some of them are sort of vaguely obvious. Um, and percentage of stop loss within the NHS. So if we go with the first one, so just tick who you think owns NHS linen. We have quite a knowledgeable audience because 90% of NHS linen, actually I should go on to the answer in a minute, it's the laundry. And that's part of the problem because you don't get this asset buy-in. So when you look at your NHS journey maps, textiles aren't even, they actually sit with the laundry cost because scope three, the linen is owned by the laundry. So if we can work together to reduce linen, that helps your scope three and it helps the laundry scope three. So it sits on both. But that's actually, we do have quite a knowledgeable audience. So we're well, not knowledgeable, but laundry biased, which is great for me. 
Right, this is another one. What's more, sa- and you're sort of going to get it, but there are some slides that follow it. What do you think is more sustainable, single use or multi use? So, why is 50% of the NHS scrubs and surgical gowns single use? And when you just look at the difference, a reusable gown or s- can be used 70 times, obviously, a single use can be used once. The carbon footprint of a single use versus multi use is massively different because here, you've brought, we reuse it. So that's a life cycle carbon footprint. There is the theory about infection control, but 50% of surgical gowns are reusable. If you take some of the other, you know, other countries, 90% are reusable. They've got to be washed carefully and they've got to be sterilized. You know, but, but during COVID, I'm going to make up you, the government, so I'm not blaming anybody, were buying 500,000 single-use gowns a day. If you'd bought 3 million multi-use gowns, that would have survived COVID then and COVID now, whatever's about to happen. Because laundries can wash them 70 times. So you, the carbon footprint and the monetary value, but trying to engage, and we had you know, hundreds of meetings talking about single multi-use, but I think we were too far down the uh, procurement route for it to change. And we had 24,000 laundry workers on furlough, so it could be washed for nothing. But we were, ju- and there's still 7,000 40-foot containers full of single-use garn- gowns. Most of them now are out of date and out of age. So when I say single-use gown, single-use PPE. So you have got masks and you have got other product within that range. Um, but we want to sort of understand why we're not getting a bigger agenda around it. But the surgical gown or the isolation gown or the patient's gown could easily be reusable in our view. Right, last question. What do you think the percentage of stop loss is? And remember, the linen is owned by the laundry now per year. So if you buy 1,000 sheets, what percent of those 1,000 sheets are lost in a year? Right, the answer is over 81%. It's a massive, and actually, some of the numbers are more towards 90% of product we buy a year for the NHS is lost. So it's, if you look at the whole sustainability journey, if we can start to actually do something about this, we would massively impact on carbon footprint. And I'll sort of just touch on a little bit about carbon footprint. Most of a laundry's carbon footprint is about buying the product, not the washing it. So this area of textile losses is massive. And I'm going to move on to hospitality in a minute because we've done other work with the hospitality sector that has proved quite successful and would love to engage the NHS in a conversation, but we're struggling. That is four million pieces of just bed linen. This is not surgical gowns. Of bed linen is lost per year. The sustainability footprint of that is just, this is not washing it, this is to bring that product in, is 300 million bathtubs of water. We have the number on the calculator and you can't, it's got too many digits, I can't even say it, but it's trillions. So just to make one duvet cover is 29,000 litres of water. To make a kilo of cotton, it's seven kilos of, of carbon. So the, the sustainability footprint of laundry, the laundry bit is small, it's the linen bit that is the bigger bit. So we want to sort of come up with what can we do about it. But that is a, you know, everybody in this room, every person in the UK, that's four baths a year, and 7,600 7, tonnes of carbon. So if we want to change the sustainability footprint of laundry, we've actually got to stop linen losses. And it's not a new conversation. I think all your suppliers will be having those conversations with you, but we haven't really made any difference to it yet over the last 10 years. It's got worse. Part of that is access to labor, understanding, and training. This is a meeting I came from literally this morning at the Crown Plaza, so it's UK hospitality. So we brought, we had the same problem in the hospitality sector, but only 50% of linen lost within hotels. We were able to bring all the major groups together and sort of sit down, and because it's PLC and sustainability, say, what are we going to do about it? So we're able to put together a bit of a plan, and we put some posters together and a video, but, you know, looking after linen looks after the planet. So instead of just talking 
it was a bit combative where we would say, you're losing our linen, you're abusing it, what are you going to do about it? It was actually, this is damaging the planet. So we love the sustainability agenda. agenda, And we think it's really good for the staff, you know, for the nurses, the auxiliaries. They actually do genuinely, as the survey we showed with the NHS staff earlier on, they do care for the planet. They may not care that much about a laundry's P&L, but they will care about the planet and looking after the planet. So we can just change the agenda to say, together we can really work at this, but normally it's ignorance. They don't deliberately chuck the gown in the clinical ways. They don't put it in the black bin liner. It's just like, well, it's not really ours. I've got a busy day. You work incredibly hard. What do you do at the end of the day? I'll take it home. I won't take it home. I'll give it to a friend. But the losses accumulate. They are massive. And remember, that's over a year. So you've only got to take one gown home a year or one scrub top a year, and that's, that's gone. That's, that's the losses we're talking about. So one damaged bar sheet, 15,000. You can see the number. And we're saying we would change the language for the healthcare sector. It needs to be changed. Yeah, it could be one scrub gown, one king-size duvet cover, 29,000 litres. And the other sort of issue with sustainability, at the moment, it's only talking carbon. So everything net zero is carbon. Water, we think, is a massive area of sustainability. Microfibers, microbeads, water quality, water usage. So we want to put water on the agenda as well. And that would really, really help the NHS as well because we're really good on water. So there would be a sort of win-win there as well. Linen, use it, don't abuse it. We can come up with a better slogan. And we then did a short video which was aimed at housekeeping staff. So this could be aimed at nurses, auxiliary people. Do you understand the system? What happens if you, sh you know, throw your gown in the bin, if you wrap the patient and it gets incinerated, if it goes out? Because a lot of patients take some linen home with them because they're wrapped up in it or they've got the product. So we just need to raise awareness. We don't think it's blatant. We don't think in the NHS it's theft. In the, some other sectors it could be theft. You're saying it is. I mean, I mean sorry. sorry. Right, in hotels there is a theft issue. Yes. We don't think in the NHS it's a theft issue. It's a sort of, I'm really, really busy issue. I, I, I just, I, I can't be bothered to think about linen. And in fact, yeah, I'll just get another one. I'm a medium, I'll take another scrub top. Or yeah, take the towel home, it, that's fine. Don't worry, you know, it's not mine, so that's fine. There's a little bit about staining. There's a lot of stains we can't get out, but it's not a big issue in the NHS because you're not that fussy. You're just pleased to have a sheet normally. In, in hospitality, staining's a much bigger issue. You know, if you stay in a five-star hotel and it's got a stain in the middle of the sheet, you've got a problem. In the NHS, you probably use it, if I'm honest, because you, you've just got to get the linen in and it's got property of NHS or whatever. So there is an element, staining's not the big issue. Obviously, if it's got a hole in it, so damage is an issue. But there are lots of stains we can't get out as a laundry. If it touches a wet concrete floor, concrete marks never come out. So I think there is an educational piece around you know, staining some of the chemicals you use within the NHS, bromide and things, will never get out the brown marks. Concrete marks are probably the biggest single issue within a laundry, and you'll never ever laundry at the back. You'll never get concrete marks out of a product. It's permanently stained. So this is our roadmap, and in there we had engaged with UK Hospitality. Uh, there's little bits here. UK Hospitality Committee to eliminate single-use plastic. We'd love to, over here, put engage with the NHS to eliminate single-use plastic. Engage with the NHS on a staff training programme. And we have tried. We've had lots of meetings. We're actually getting more momentum with the government and DEFRA, but they're talking about legislating. So we were actually in the state in Washington this year. New York has now legislated that 50% of all healthcare linens must be reusable and they were 100% single use. Italy has legislated that all healthcare linens must be multi-use. But it feels a bit, we want to go with a collaborative approach, what, what works for the NHS. There will be elements that I'm sure should be single use, but there's a lot more, a much bigger conversation to be had. So we're sort of saying what we've done with UK hospitality, we'd love to do with the NHS. And I know this isn't exactly the right forum, but it's, we don't get a lot of them. So any ideas of how we can communicate the message? We'll do all the material. We'll make the posters. We'll make the video. Pasha is a sort of little seven mil, no, 
four, five minute video. Yeah, we'll make her pasha, it could be a gown, it could be I'm going to the laundry, don't step on me, don't put me in the clinical waste, don't burn me. So you could create a personality on a gown, on a sheet, but would it work? Because there's no point in us doing it if nobody's going to use it. Our bit is, but if we can remove that 90% and that became 50%, that commercially does help the model. It does make laundry more viable. So you might find there's more entrance into the market because at the moment, there aren't that many commercial laundries offering healthcare solutions. But if you carry on losing 90% of the linen, that probably ain't going to change that much. So how do we change behaviours? So we, we probably have got the stats in a way, but who, we need to get down to, I think, a user level, operator level. And that's really hard from where we sit 